Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So this channel, Every Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts in law and data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I'm going to solve this question on lead code regarding finding subtasks that did not execute and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is hard and this question has been asked in Google interviews over the past couple of years. Okay, let's jump right in. Some of you also asked for the SQL schema, right? So this is how the schema looks like. I will just copy paste this in the description as well. We are given a table called task with two different columns, task ID and subtask count. Task ID is the primary key for this table. Each row in this table indicates that the task ID was divided into subtasks count, subtasks labeled from one to subtask count. It is guaranteed that subtask counts are between 2 to 20 right we are also given a table called executed with again two columns task id and subtask id the combined columns being the primary key for this table each row in this table indicates that for the task id the subtask with id subtask id was executed successfully it is guaranteed that subtask id will be less than or equal to the subtask count for each task id okay we are asked to write a SQL query to report the IDs of the missing subtask for each task ID. The order of the result does not matter. So basically what this question is saying that you have two tables, right? One task table where you have a task ID and number of subtasks. And then there is an executed table which has basically for each of the subtasks what exactly subtask ID was executed, right? So what it means is that subtask ID 1 has three different subtasks, right? 1, 2 and 3 out of which two was executed. So for, for task ID one, which all did not execute one and three, right? Similarly for task ID two, there were two subtasks one and two, right? Which one did not execute since there is nothing for task ID two here. So both of them did not execute, right? So Similarly, you need to do this, right? For three, there are four tasks, right? One, two, three, four. And if you look at it, every one is executed. So if you look at the output, you have for task ID one, one and three were not executed. And for two, both of them, one and two were not executed, right? We need to do this. Now there can be several ways, but here I'm going to, you know, talk about the concept of recursive common table expressions, right? So basically up till now in all of my videos, we have been majorly using common table expressions, right? So we do some stuff, right? And then store that in a common table expression and then use that common table expression to get to our final output, right? Here, if you think about it, what we need to do is like here the task table says that for each task, how many subtasks are there, right? So instead of having this view, if we can have something like, okay, so task ID 1, 1, task ID 1, 2, task ID 1, 3. So three subtasks, what is the IDs of those subtasks, right? If we can have that and how can we do that? So if you think about this question in Python, right? So it is basically like writing a for loop that for each of the task ID, start with subtask count and then keep, you know, subtracting one until you reach the value one, right? So basically if you start like, for example, task ID one, right? So for task ID one, you have three subtasks. So if you start with it, so three, two, one, and if you go below one, then you will reach zero. So like, you need to stop there. Similarly for task ID two, so two, one for three, four, three, two, one. So you now can get all the subtasks associated with a certain task ID, right? So how can we, you know, use the recursive common table expression here? So the first thing is we know that to write a common table expression, we need to use the word with, right? But to write a recursive common table expression, we need to write with recursive, right? So we write with recursive, right? With recursive and then the name of the common table expression. So we usually use CTE and then we write as, so initially we used to write with CTE as, right? So now we have just included a new keyword recursive. So with recursive CTE as, and then what you need to do is basically you need to have parentheses and in this you need to write everything, right? So what we need to do here is, so we need to start with something non-recursive, right? So basically the number of rows or rows from some table where this common table expression can start working. From this table called tasks, let's keep both the column, right? So if I write select star, right? Okay, so now let, let me, you know, write select star from this common table expression, right? Let me see what we get, right? So if you look at it, right? So you have essentially what? 
you have basically the same values right because essentially this is from task keep all the columns right now this is what this will start with now what you need to do is we usually use union or you know union all or whatnot why because you have for every task id subtask count right so initially if you you know write that okay start with this and then for each of the task id you can just keep subtracting the subtask count by one until you reach the value one right so what i'm saying is here if i write union right union and then what we need to do is from this common table expression why because now you know you know this this part right so select star from task so it is now stored in common table expression right called city so now from these rows you need to start remember so that is why we need this non recursive part in the beginning for a recursive common table expression so from this common table expression what you are doing is you need to return the task id because for every task you need it right but you started with this right so how many total subtask each of the task id has then what you need to do is just simply return one minus of this so we write subtasks count minus one but if you you know don't give a condition where to stop because essentially this is a loop right a, a for loop or any loop that you write in python you need to have a terminating condition right so that is why we need to provide a terminating condition and how do we provide a terminating condition in a recursive commentable expression we use the where clause so we write where your subtask count is greater than one so you keep you know decreasing it by one until you reach one so if you look at it right so if you look at it so now you have for task id one so there was three subtasks right so you have one three then one two then you have one one right similarly for two you had two two and then two one for three as well three right so three four three 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 two and three one so now you have for each of the task id the exact ids of the subtasks right now what you need to do is you already have from these which all were executed right so if you exclude all of those from this then you are basically left with what the task id that did not execute right so how can we do this so from this common table expression we are only keeping those rows where the combined columns right so where task id and the subtasks count right subtask count are not in the executed table right so we write select star from executed table right so let me run this let's see what we are getting so if you look at it right so basically these are the tasks that are not executed and if you match it with the output like it is exactly the same right so one one right one one and then one three then 2 1 and 2 2 however we only need to change the alias of this right so we return the first column that is task id and then second column subtask count but we need to alias this as subtask id right let me run this now so now this is accepted our output is same as expected output right so basically what it's happening here is you know so you start with this right you start with a non recursing rows then you perform certain things right and then use union to basically add them or append them one below the other right so it will take okay from this common table expression so obviously what you started with from that you take the task id and subtract one from sub subtask count whatever you get you just you know append this in this then you start with another and then you append this then append this right so that is what we need to do so yeah, let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases so yeah, this passes all the test cases and this is how we do it again yes it is difficult question because here you need to firstly apply a new concept of recursive cte and i hope whatever i try to explain in recursive city that why do we need a non-recursive starting and then how we can you know perform things we perform in a loop using a recursive cte right and then once you have that so basically what we need to do is for each of the task id we broke down the 
number of subtask into their ids and then all we did was you know from this executor table excluded all of those right and that is how we got the output let me know if there is a better way or a more efficient way or if you can think of doing this question using a recursive common table expression i would be very interested to know that solution so let the solution be in the comment section below and until then i will see you guys in the next video